Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where entrepreneurs and professionals publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. We're doing a series now meeting business owners, professionals, and entrepreneurs from across the country and in your town. Joining me on this segment is Nick Palkowski. He's a freelance videographer specializing in video and live stream for small businesses. Nick, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Nick, tell us a little bit about your work and specifically the types of folks that you help. Yeah, so I do kind of all things video, really, uh, focusing specifically on YouTube for small local businesses, as well as a, a lot of live streaming, specifically kind of before the pandemic was a lot of live streaming in-person events, uh, those multi-day conferences and things like that, but now helping a lot of businesses transition to creating weekly live stream shows or live streaming just their event in the new world where we're not in person. So you're based in, in Madison, Wisconsin, not too far from me here in the, in the suburbs of Chicago. So are you helping people locally or mostly remotely? How do you help folks from out of town? Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. So it is uh, helping people remotely as well as, of course, some in-person people here. Um, used to travel a lot to the in-person events and would film and stuff there. But now a lot of clients are, uh, we're using a combination of Zoom and several other different platforms to produce a high quality event with people scattered throughout the world. So yeah, just recently we saw Dan Kennedy uh, uh, give a live stream just the other day, actually. What kind of technology are they using there? Because I noticed it was just a simple screen with the embedded video that was live with the chat roll underneath it. Yeah, uh, so I don't know, know specifically what Dan was using for, what they were using for that, um, but there it can be a wide variety of things. There's several different platforms out there. Me personally, what I like to use uh, for more of those kind of special events or like maybe even the ticketed events, a lot of times people, when they think of live streaming, they don't always think of paid ticketed events, but you can still run those via live stream. Um, so a lot of times what we'll, we'll do is if we say have multiple speakers or multiple different breakout sessions, because you can again have kind of a live event with concurrent sessions going on, um, is we'll use Zoom as kind of that background platform to bring all the speakers together uh, so that we have kind of that Zoom room and then we'll have all of them there and then I'm able to use another software like vMix or Ecamm if you're running on a Mac um, to put that out either on Facebook or YouTube where we can really control what's being presented and make sure that people look their best, have things like lower thirds go across the screen or play videos, play specialty graphics, have, have things designed in a way that really is elevated and high quality. So uh, you look very professional and you're not just jumping on a Zoom meeting like we're all kind of used to now, even when we're hanging out with friends and family. Yeah, and I imagine with the popularity of Zoom, there's a lot of misconceptions out there and misinformation. People probably think it's it's got to be easy. Just plug and play. Everybody does it. My kid does it. But I can tell there's a lot more going on, as you can see, with lower thirds and graphics. What other kind of co common misconceptions are out there that business owners can like avoid falling in the trap of uh, when it comes to doing video and live streams? Yeah, well, and that's an excellent point too. And I want to really, what I really want to encourage people to do is to jump in and at least get started. So even if you are just going live directly from your phone, just get started, especially as a small business owner, I don't want you to like hold back on any of that. Um, but yeah, there are lots of different little things that you can do to kind of step step the professionalism up a little bit more, make it look better. A lot of that starts with just better lighting and better camera and slowly upping your camera quality, but even just small little things like thinking about uh, the way you're framed. So like both of us right now, we're kind of framed like towards the top of the screen. We're not where you're only seeing like half of somebody's face or have a huge space and you're a tiny little person uh, in there. We're, we're closer to the camera. We're our head is towards the top of the screen. We're framed well. Camera's at about eye level. We have nice audio coming through. Um, but then once you get past some of those camera basics, you can do things like add another camera angle where that camera can be, you know, even on a slider or some different elements. You can have kind of those 
uh, behind the scenes camera shots where you can see all of the equipment that's there and see everything that's going on. Uh, you can add a lot of those graphics, add those videos, um, add high quality presentations, branded in a way that is right for you, that looks to your business. And so it's slow, I would suggest for anybody just getting started, main thing, get started, then look to upgrade your audio quality, uh, look to upgrade lighting, uh, even if it's just a natural light, but find some place where you're well lit so people can easily see you. Uh, and then you can start looking at some softwares. Uh, there's some browser-based ones that can usually be pretty easy for people to jump in, into. Things like StreamYard or Restream can be great to kind of someone who's just getting started. But once you're looking to do this more for your business as a consistent marketing tool, I would look at some sort of third-party software, something like an Ecamm if you're running on a Mac or vMix if you're running on a PC. Those are great softwares that can uh, incorporate all kinds of, pretty much anything you can think of uh, when you're thinking of image quality and you're thinking of a television show or something like that, you're gonna be able to pull off with those two softwares. Nick, I'm so happy that you gave those demonstrations as you were explaining this, because I think there are a lot of folks that they don't know what they don't know, right? So they think it's right. really simple, but there's a lot more to it and a lot going on. And I can see that you have it set up so you can use this great for live streaming, for, for events, and even just for content video for business owners. So Absolutely. Nick, how did you like, the, you know, it, it's, it's, been around, video's been around, but it's also such a, it's still new. So how yeah. did you learn all this stuff? Uh, what inspired you to get into it? How'd you get started? Well, it's been kind of a weird, interesting journey for me personally, um, but I've kind of always been interested in video. Like this, this was back to making stop motion videos with little Legos back when I was in junior high, uh, sixth grade, things like that. Um, but then progressing, I was always kind of interested in video, moved into the podcasting world back in 2006, 2007, started a podcast. Um, but what ultimately happened is I was running podcasts for other business owners, speakers, presenters, coaches, people like that. Um, and one of my clients asked me to help with a live stream for their event. And so back in 2011, big multi-person, like 400 people in a in-person conference, uh, figured out how to get their live stream going so we could stream throughout the world, had, you know, dozens of people on the live stream. So it wasn't a crazy huge live stream, but I was figuring out those little elements. And I just kind of got hooked with that live uh, in-person kind of live streaming and it slowly has progressed for there from there and I've been doing really focusing on live streaming and video for you know the past two three years just kind of focusing in on that running my own business helping more people uh, get their message out to the world like I started way back in the day 1991 as a as an entertainer in it and a mobile disc jockey and I remember my first set of equipment you know was probably put together with duct tape <laughs> was there ever a, a time I mean you couldn't have been this polished the whole way what was like that first gig like for you what did that look like Oh no, it was kind of crazy. So this was like, even trying to like live stream or capture video for a podcast, uh, you know, we'd be on Skype in a really, with both janky computers and uh, using the really crappy web cameras and trying to find audio that's a little bit better than the built-in one. Um, and luckily for me, that first really big event we had the cameras and stuff there to project on the screen. So it was a lot of figuring out, okay, how can we tap into that and multi-purpose it? Um, so luckily for me, that was kind of the way that started out, but it, it has been buying lots of equipment, uh, finding lots of things that didn't work or that didn't work very well. Uh, that's the one thing that I really love about where we are right now is there's so many tools out there to help you get quality video, quality live streaming, out there into the world. Like even what you have with your phone is just amazing compared to what we were using back then. Uh, there, I was using cameras that were in 360p. Like that's what we were live streaming back when, uh, before Twitch was even Twitch, it was Justin TV back then. Like that's what we were working with then. Um, so it's been awesome to see things progress, price points drop. Um, and now live streaming professional quality stuff is 
within the hands of any business owner out there. Like you can do that. It's going to take some research, going to take a little bit of investing, but honestly, not too much. And again, you're going to get great results. You're going to get good results with the phone that's in your pocket right now, which is really cool. I can imagine in, back in the early days, you're trying to do stuff with, with stuff that probably wasn't even designed to do it. You're probably pioneering in a lot of ways. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you are spending a lot of money just to get to like the platforms. Like now you can stream to Facebook and YouTube for free. We were paying tens of thousands of dollars to get out there uh, and just use that platform. Not even talking about equipment. Like it was right around that $10,000 mark just to be able to get a stream out at that point. Um, so now the fact that you can, you know, again, do it from your phone, you have these platforms. It's amazing really where we've come since those early days. Uh, but it doesn't mean it's not stressful still. Like there's still a lot of people who will be hesitant. A lot of, that's what I hear most from business owners. They're, they get overwhelmed by it. They're, they're overwhelmed by the gear, by the software. Uh, that's why I, I really want to focus on helping people just kind of get started in this world and just take that first step to get started with their live stream. So Nick, before I ask you my last question, um, for business owners, as you mentioned, who are hesitant, they're not really even sure why they're doing video or what kind of video they should be doing. Let's just wave a magic wand and say you're going to take all that technology headache off of their hands. What kind of video, kind of, can you spitball a few ideas for what they could do on a regular basis to grow their business using video and live streams? Absolutely. So I really recommend looking at doing um, a weekly show of some sort. Uh, the biggest thing is uh, showing up kind of on a consistent basis. If you have the bandwidth to do that, that's where I would start. Um, if you don't, obviously just getting started with something, if it's a monthly show, something like that would be great. Uh, as a business owner, think about what are the questions that your customers are constantly coming in and asking. Uh, so one of my clients is Audi, for example, here, a local business, a local car dealership here. Um, and just even today, they reached out and a lot of customers are coming in and asking about how to reset the tire pressure light. So we're going to be creating a video just for that. So that kind of walks them through what needs to happen, how that needs to work. Uh, and that way you're answering a lot of your clients and customers questions. What I'll really do with a client is go through and have them create a list initially to think about what are your 10 most frequently asked questions. Uh, and then we're going to go through and create a list of what are the 10 questions that a potential customer should be asking you to really dial in and figure out exactly if the service is right for, for them. Uh, and right there is going to be potentially a great start for your first 20 videos, or even, um, you know, it might not lay out exactly like that, but that should get the kind of that ball rolling of questions that people should be asking. And then it's really keeping an ear into what are those different areas. Like I, I like to think there are a few main types of episodes. There's those purely teaching ones where we're kind of taking people through questions. There's also uh, the experiential kind of episodes, which is taking people kind of behind the scenes, you know, showing them uh, what things kind of look like, what the process might be like, what the setup could be that you use in order to produce the, the gear and the business that and in order to run your business, like show them, give them a peek behind the curtain, if you will. Uh, people love to see that process and love to see the way things kind of come together. So that's just a few little ideas. And then even from there, you can start looking at people in your industry or people related to your industry. If you're a real estate person, maybe you're thinking about talking to and interviewing a landscaper about how to prepare your, your yard for the coming winter or for spring, how to make it look the best. Start to think about people who are kind of connected to your industry and bring them on to give more value to your current customers and your potential customers. Nick, I absolutely love it. That's exactly what I was looking for. I know my audience loves that, getting inspiration, ideas, and stuff that, that's actionable. So Nick, for my audience out there that really lit up about this topic and would love to start doing video and could use your help, how can they find you? Yeah, well, first, I'd really, uh, you can check out, go to my website, nickbolkowski.com. Um, I would really recommend checking out the YouTube channel. Uh, we've been slowly growing there. I talk a lot about just live streaming and other things like that, how to get started with live streaming. So if people want to go check that out, 
Uh, you can find, just search for Nick Volkowski in YouTube or go to nickvolkowski.com slash YouTube. That's going to get you started there. Um, I also do have, if people are interested, they can go and grab a live stream checklist by going to nickvolkowski.com slash checklist. It kind of takes you through everything I think about before we get, uh, before we actually hit that live button. Nick, this has been absolutely terrific. I really appreciate it. Lots of sage advice. I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Nick Polkowski, everybody, a freelance videographer and helping small businesses with live streams. This segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where entrepreneurs and professionals publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. Join me for my next Expert Spotlight. I'm Mark Imperial.